Week 12 of the 2024 fantasy football season is in the books, and we are headed straight into week 13 of the fantasy season. We got three Thursday games, a Black Friday game, and a full slate of Sunday and Monday NFL games here in a holiday week. So you guys know exactly what we need to do. We're going to go through every single matchup, go over every single running back, and talk about who you should be starting and who you should be sitting. And before we do so, let me remind you guys that Underdog is the place you want to be if you want to get in on additional fantasy football action all season long. Their Week 13 NFL Pick'ems are already going live, and Underdog is giving all new users who sign up with promo code the catch a free NFL Pick'em to use towards any of week 13's action and on top of that as long as you guys sign up with promo code the catch that link is down below underdog is also giving all new users a 50 percent deposit match up to one thousand dollars so that's a free nfl pick em for week 13 and up to one thousand dollars in bonus cash when you sign up on underdog with promo code the catch so let's start with the first of three Thursday games. That's going to be the Bears traveling to face the Lions. A little bit of a tale of two different stories when we're looking at these teams right now. But the Bears have been a little bit better offensively since they made a change at offensive coordinator. Nonetheless, DeAndre Swift gets a steep matchup this week as that Lions defense has been very good against opposing running backs through the majority of the entire season. One of the best run defenses in the NFL. And Swift is coming off of a game where he had 13 touches, 30 yards on the ground, four targets, three receptions for 35 receiving yards, netting just 9.5 fantasy points against another one of the best run defenses in the league, the Minnesota Vikings. So this is another tough matchup for DeAndre Swift, plus the Lions' weakest part of that defense is their secondary, similar to the Vikings, and we saw a ton of volume to the Bears wide receivers last week and even the week before against Green Bay, but Swift came through in that matchup. So. Swift is just kind of in that area of eh, you can start him if you don't have better options. You know, I, I don't think he's an awful start, but I do think he's a little bit touchdown dependent at this point in the season. So kind of weigh your options here. Swift is still startable. I don't think it's all a doom and gloom for DeAndre Swift with a 9.5 performance last week. I mean, he still has had double digits in every game except for two since week four. So Swift should be fine, but the matchup on the road here, short week, eh. Uh, not my favorite start this week in week 13. Roshan Johnson, just a handcuff for me. I know he has a touchdown in the last two games, uh, but the ceiling is just not high whatsoever. Uh, the usage is super low overall. and you, you just can't really call these weeks when Roshan Johnson's going to get opportunities and when he's not going to get opportunities. So he's a good handcuff, but not a player that I want to start, especially short week, bad matchup uh, here in week 13. But when it comes to the Lions, uh, I would start David Montgomery, who should have an asterisk. Um, he is questionable going into the week as he's dealing with that shoulder injury. So we'll probably find out. I would guess by Wednesday, if not last uh, lasting Thursday, if he's going to play or not, he did come out and say that he's going to play, that he should be good to go. I mean, he was on the sidelines back in full gear. No reason to put him back in against the Colts, so I think they just rest him the uh, rest of the game. But Monty should play this week, could play this week. We'll find out. It's a good enough matchup here against the Bears. And regardless, I mean, this is your RB9 on the season. I'm starting David Montgomery if I own him, but maybe look at your options here. You know, maybe if you're a little bit worried about a re-injury or maybe he gets less touches depending on the game script here. Maybe this isn't a high ceiling week for Monty, but all season long, my thesis on the Lions has been start Monty, start Gibbs. So if you're wondering, this week I would also start Jameer Gibbs, who's moved up to the RB3 so far on the season. I know uh, at the time of recording this before Monday Night Football, Henry has not played uh, his week 12 stat line and Kamara was on bye week this week, but you got Saquon moving up and I got Gibbs moving up as well. 24.9 fantasy points, 90 yards on the ground, two tutties, three targets, three receptions, nine receiving yards. I mean, not much to go over here. You own Gibbs, you start him, you own Monty. I still think that you're rolling with him as long as he's listed as healthy. Swift, 
startable away your options in this first of three Thursday games in week 13. I'm heading straight to underdog this week to take Jameer Gibbs to score a touchdown. Thanksgiving Day, David Montgomery banged up at home. Don't really care the opponent here. Chicago's decent enough, but Jameer Gibbs to score on Thanksgiving Day just feels right. The Lions absolutely humming right now. Best team in the league. You got to believe that Jameer Gibbs going to get a touchdown this week. So I'm headed straight to underdog to take the over on Gibbs to score a touchdown. Underdog is giving all new users who sign up with promo code DCATCH a free NFL pick for Thanksgiving Day. Take your free pick Take Gibbs to score a touchdown. Once both of those lines hit, you're going to automatically triple your cash entry. Start off on underdog with a dub. And as long as you sign up with promo code the catch, you're also going to receive a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. Next matchup will be the Giants traveling to face the Cowboys, and we got kind of two shaky situations here. A little Tommy DeVito, Cooper Rush matchup in the middle of Thanksgiving Day, probably while everybody's eating. This is probably the most skippable game of the week. But nonetheless, Tyrone Tracy, nine touches in Week 12 against Tampa Bay. was a good matchup, but just 42 total yards, four targets, four grabs, 28 receiving yards, and a fumble. Also had a lost fumble in Week 10. And That's starting to become a little bit of a concern for Tyrone Tracy owners. We did see a little bit more involvement out of Devin Singletary and Eric Gray this past week. And you got to kind of wonder at what point this continues. Is Tracy going to start to hit that doghouse, right? But this is a good matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. But I will say their defense was impressive last week against the commanders, at least against the run. I mean, I know Brian Robinson was hurt. Eckler got the concussion late. but uh, this defense played well against a run last week, right? So Tracy's kind of in a weird spot this week, short week, uh, not really a dynamic offense right now, given the quarterback situation, difficult for them to move the football. So uh, he's definitely not my favorite start, but he is startable if you don't have better options. As far as Devin Singletary, Eric Gray, I'm staying away from these two this week. We'll see if that pattern starts to kind of pick up if uh, Tracy continues to have struggles. Then we look at the Cowboys. Rico Dowdle just kind of lives in that, eh. Sure, you can start him. He is startable um, at home this week. Listen, the Cowboys, it's not all doom and gloom. It's not very good, but I mean, I kind of said this, um, you know, before week 11, like there's going to be points where this offense isn't just going to be completely awful. They're going to figure some things out and guys like Rico Dowdle, maybe a healthy Jake Ferguson, which is really Luke Shoemaker, who has been productive right now at tight end. CD Lamb, like these guys are still going to have decent fantasy stat lines given certain matchups and they have a pretty easy strength of schedule the rest of the season outside of a week 17 matchup on the road against Philadelphia. So I do think that Rico Dowdle is very startable this week. I actually would maybe argue I like him more than Tyrone Tracy because this Giants run defense is really bad right now. Uh, They just gave up three touchdowns to Sean Tucker, Bucky Irving, and Rashad White in the past week. Um, And I just think that, you know, this is going to be one of those weeks where potentially we see Rico Dowdle come through for a decent stat line. So he did have 10.8 fantasy points in week 12, 86 yards on the ground, 4.53 yards per carry, and added three targets, three catches, 12 receiving yards. He did have a lost fumble as well. So yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends. What do you have? This is a week with no bye week, so I don't think they're going to be forced to start Rico Dowdle, but I'll just leave it out. I do think he is startable. Zeke, on the other hand, I know it's Thanksgiving Day and he likes to eat, but I'm benching Ezekiel Elliott in week 13. To wrap up Thanksgiving Day, we're going to have the Dolphins traveling to face the Packers. This is a pretty easy evaluation. We got two studs in this matchup. Let's start with the Dolphins. Devon A. Shane, double digits in every game since week seven. 20 or more fantasy points in every game since week eight except for week 10 against the Rams. 20.6 fantasy points in week 12, 32 yards on the ground, four targets, three receptions, 24 receiving yards, and had two receiving touchdowns. Devon A. Shane continues to be a must-start running back week in and week out. If you own him, nothing to overthink here. You are starting Devon A. Shane this week. As far as anybody else on this team at the running back position, uh, this is A. Shane's backfield, Mostert, Jalen Wright, 
not interested in either guys from a fantasy perspective. And it's a difficult backfield to handcuff as well because you have more than one name there behind a chain. Now, Josh Jacobs, I mean, there is some concern about Jacobs going into week 12, believe it or not, because the Niners have still ranked pretty decent against running backs. And Jacobs had like two injuries going into this game. But if you guys watched last week's must start players video, Josh Jacobs was one of my must start running backs last week. He came through with 28.6 fantasy points, 106 rushing yards, and three touchdowns. A hat trick for Jacobs, and I would continue to start him this week. The Dolphins have improved uh, a bit against the running back position, but they're still not fantastic against opposing running backs. And I mean, Jacobs has 20 or more fantasy points in every game since week seven, except for week nine against the Lions. And he's given you double digits in every game this year, except for week three against Tennessee. He is looking like a true league winner, as is Devon A. Shane. So let's start both of these guys this week. Nothing to overthink here. Emmanuel Wilson, a good handcuff. He did get a little bit more involvement last week, but uh, we're not starting him. Not enough volume there to consider him a start. He's just a handcuff. So there we go. A-Chain, Jacobs, Stardom, everybody else let's leave on the bench or on the waivers as we get into week 13. All right, and we have a Black Friday game this year. We're going to see the Raiders travel to face the Chiefs. And uh, let's start with kind of a head-scratching backfield right now with uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. First thing I'm going to say is we've got no bye weeks this week. There's not really like any crazy injuries at running back. So, I don't think you need to start any Raiders running back. Last week was a little bit different. As the week progressed, we became okay with starting Amir Abdullah here on the channel, and um, that turned out to be a good call. Amir Abdullah came through even in a tough matchup against Denver with 17 and a half fantasy points, but like there, there just shouldn't be a reason you would need to consider any Raiders running backs this week. And right now, we don't know the status of Alexander Madison or Zamir White, at least at the time I'm recording this going into week 13. So like I don't know if Abdullah is going to be an option this week. He might. It's a short week. Um, and uh, the Raiders got through with him this past week. But now you got this really shaky quarterback situation for the Raiders. No Gardner Minshew for the rest of the season. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if Aiden O'Connell can come back this week or if it's the fall following week or how long he needs to stay on IR or if he's even ready to come back. So we're probably looking at Desmond Ritter as a starting quarterback, which uh, he showed a little bit of life after having the fumble initially. But I mean, there's just not a lot to feel good about here going up against a stout Kansas City Chiefs defense. So as this week starts to progress, we might look at Amir Abdullah as a desperation play. I mean, some of you guys are in 16-team leagues. Some of you guys are in 20-team leagues. Some of you guys are in very deep dynasty leagues. So I try to consider everything here. But uh, that's about where I'll leave it. Uh, Abdullah may be a deep streaming option in a deep format if Madison and White are out. Outside of that, I'm not looking at this backfield whatsoever this week. Now, you might be looking at uh, Kareem Hunt and Isaiah Pacheco. I mean, they're in the same kind of category for me, and we talked about this this past week against the Panthers. Like, I don't think Pacheco's just going to come in here and get all the volume. If he does play in Week 13, which I believe he's expected to, we'll find out. Uh, was inactive last week. Obviously, he's off IR, but, you know, I... I I just don't know what this split's exactly going to look like. And last week, I was okay with putting Hunt in the start category because of the matchup. And he didn't even come through. Kareem Hunt was an extreme disappointment last week. I mean, he still had 11.7 fantasy points, but no touchdown against the Panthers. 68 yards on the ground, three receptions, 19 receiving yards. Like It was fine, but against the Panthers, you're expecting that upside and that touchdown upside. So this is another good matchup for Hunt and company. Here in week 13, but just once again, no bye weeks, no crazy injuries. I wouldn't force myself to play either Chiefs running backs unless you seriously have no other option. And let's see how this split starts to unfold as we start to wrap up the season. But for now, believe it or not, as much as I like Pacheco and as much as the production has been there for Hunt, I kind of want to stay away from the situation in week 13. As far as any other Kansas City Chiefs running back, Pirine, Steele, to stay away from them. They're on the waivers as we get into week 13. Okay, let's move into Sunday's action, and let's start with the Texans traveling to face the Jaguars. And boy, oh boy, we should be expecting a massive day out of Joe Mixon, who uh, kind of got stifled last week against the Titans, just 9.5 fantasy points, just 22 yards on the ground, 14 total touches, 1.57 yards per carry. 
maybe helped get you through, luckily, because he had five catches for 23 receiving yards. But I get you through, I mean, nine and a half fantasy points. So, listen, you're still starting Joe Mixon, especially in this matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars before the Texans have their bye week in week 14. Don't overthink it here. Mixon's going to be fine. I mean, everybody gets a pass. He's given you double digits in every full game. He's played it on the season, except for this past week. And the, the way this game script went, the Texans ended up needing to really throw the football. So don't panic here if you're a Mixon owner. I know coming off of the three touchdown game in week 11, you're kind of like, what in the world? But Mixon will be fine. It's a great matchup. Keep rolling with him. Not a lot to break down there. Damian Pierce, Dare Agumbawale, any other running back here on the Texans, not considering them. And yeah, I'm not considering Travis Etienne or Tank Bigsby, any Jacksonville Jaguars running back. I know Pollard had a good day against the Texans this past week, but ultimately on the season, the Texans have been a good run defense and there's just no life here for this Jags offense with Mac Jones as the starting quarterback so uh, no bye weeks no crazy injuries once again there's a no reason to start ET and or Bigsby in week 13. All right next up we got the Colts traveling to face the Patriots and I do think this is an interesting matchup to take a look at when it comes to the running back position. I'm a little shaky on both these guys here Going into week 13, Jonathan Taylor in his last four games has 8.9 or less fantasy points in three of them and is coming off of his worst fantasy performance on the season with 3.5 fantasy points against the Detroit Lions. Obviously a very good run defense, but the Patriots defense kind of wishy-washy. They really show up some weeks. They don't show up other weeks. They're kind of right there in the middle against running backs, but still a decent defense. And, you know, we've seen like Anthony Richardson take some of the touchdown upside away from Jonathan Taylor not really this past week um some of the rushing upside away as he's ran the ball 10 times in the last two games so you know I, I think Taylor is definitely still startable he still has get, gotten a lot of goal line touches in the last two weeks believe it or not uh, but it just hasn't really been there so I'm a little shaky on him but you gotta expect some positive regression coming for JT uh, so, I, I mean, we look at like Aaron Jones, Tony Pollard, you know, not so good in week 11. They both bounce back in week 12. I think JT can bounce back at any point in time. But look at your other options. Maybe you like another player more than JT. But once again, this is still Jonathan Taylor. Don't be surprised when he goes off for 15 plus fantasy points. It's going to happen again at some point. He should be fine. But the last two weeks have been worrisome, especially. And then uh, the Colts offense just kind of in a shaky place right now. So, I mean, he's still very startable. He's Jonathan Taylor, but maybe it'll depend on who else you got. We have no teams on bye week here in week 13, trying to really hone in on these start sit decisions and be a little bit more critical of some players as we get into the week. Now, Ramondre Stevenson, kind of a similar situation, right? 8.7 points in week 10, 12.9 in week 11, 3.3 against Miami last week. And kind of the problem here is, is that Drake May is throwing the football well enough that... Uh, the Patriots are throwing the football first and foremost, which is impacting Stevenson. I mean, he had 20 or more touches uh, three times between weeks eight and 12. So, like, kind of get comfortable, but then he had 10 touches in week nine. He did get a touchdown that week, so it was fine. Just eight touches this past week. Like, it's kind of all over the place. And like I said, they're throwing the football first and foremost. So, Kind of a weird situation for Stevenson in terms of this offense as well. It's not a bad matchup this week against the Colts. Depends on who you got. He's not my favorite start, but he's definitely very startable this week, as is Jonathan Taylor. Really just depends on who else you got here. In terms of every other running back you see on the screen, Colts backups, Patriots backups, we're not considering them in week 13. Let's move along to the Chargers traveling to face the Falcons. And as a reminder, I have to record these videos before Monday Night Football has been played. So I don't know how the Chargers backfield looked uh, against the Baltimore Ravens at the time I'm recording this. It is a bad matchup. So if they don't come through or if J.K. Dobbins doesn't come through, I should say with a massive game or anything, don't panic. And I will say the Atlanta Falcons have been good against a run on the season. It's not a great matchup here, but I think Dobbins is still very startable and maybe our confidence will Will be higher or lower dependent on his performance on Monday Night Football. But ultimately, you know, I kept the faith in Dobbins going into week 11 and he was just 
fine. So I'm not going to worry here, even if we see some touches of Gus Edwards or some goal line work to Hassan Haskins or maybe a lower ceiling because he's facing the Ravens. We'll see what happens. Dobbins showed in week 11 that he still has that explosive uh, capability, can still find the end zone, still come through with a good fantasy performance when we need it. So I'm going to keep some faith in Dobbins. We'll see what happens in Monday Night Football. Of course, if anything changes my mind or there's any major injuries, it'll be in a pinned comment down below. John Robinson was on bye week in week 12, and he is currently sitting at the time of recording this as the RB7 on the season. We're going to keep rolling with Bijan Robinson. I know week 11 was a little bit of a lower ceiling with 10.3 fantasy points, but week 6 through 10, he got 20 plus fantasy points in every game for Bijan. This should be a good competitive game script. Yo, and Bijan Robinson. Not a lot to break down. We're starting him in week 13. Next up, we have the Seahawks who will travel to face the Jets. And this should be a little bit of an interesting matchup. Let's start with the Seattle Seahawks. Listen, Kenneth Walker is startable on a weekly basis. But the ceiling has been lower lately. 13.3 points in week 12. I was trying to think of a creative way to say this. He's had around 13 points in three straight games, 13.7, 13.9, and 13.3. Uh, but really, I mean, like while the ceiling's been lower and the passing attack's been a little bit more efficient as of late, uh, Walker's only given you a single-digit performance once on the season. He gets that involvement in the passing game, scores touchdowns here and there. I mean, uh, I will say I like him this week specifically, like as a start, because I have no faith whatsoever in the Jets defense. I've been talking about this for weeks and weeks. They're just not a good defense. I know they played okay pretty well through the first couple games of the season, but specifically their run defense essentially all season long has been really bad. So uh, this matchup I love. This I, I really think that the Seattle Seahawks are top of their division right now. Uh, I talked about this in the defense video. Like I think the Seahawks could put that final, final nail in the coffin on the Jets season. I know the Jets season's already over, but if you have any hope left as a Jets fan, I think the Seahawks could come through with a big performance, even on the road here in week 13. So uh, Walker, very startable. I like this matchup for him. The, the floor is safe is the good news, but I think he could get back to a good ceiling this week as well. Zach Charbonnet is a handcuff, nothing more. Six touches last week, 22 yards on the ground, 2.2 fantasy points. Very good handcuff, but that's all he is. Now, I do like Brees Hall still, okay? I'm going to still stay in my boat of start Brees Hall. If you guys remember, weeks 8, weeks 9, weeks 10, I kept saying it over and over again. Buy Brees Hall low. 31.1 fantasy points in week 11. The last time we saw the Jets play for Brees Hall, 78 yards on the ground, a touchdown, 7 targets, 7 receptions, 43 receiving yards, and a touchdown for Brees Hall. Massive day for Brees Hall. And don't forget his remainder – uh, strength of schedule is very, very strong as he gets Seattle, Miami, Jacksonville, the Rams, and Buffalo. Some of these teams have improved slightly since we started to look towards the end of the season stretch and earlier videos on the season. Seattle slightly improving, Miami slightly improving, and the Rams uh, improving as well. But ultimately, this is still a really good stretch. Now, the interesting thing here for Brees Hall is who's going to be the quarterback? <laughs> is it going to be Aaron Rodgers? Is he going to go to IR and to sit out the rest of the season. It's going to be Tyrod Taylor. Is Zach Wilson going to get traded to the Jets? I don't quite know here, um, but I will say that regardless, I think Brees Hall is going to be fine. He kind of benefits from bad quarterback play. And if you're worried about Tyrod Taylor coming in and messing up Brees Hall's value, Aaron Rodgers has not been very good on the season. I mean, he's put his stats this year with the Jets next to Zach Wilson's time with the Jessica is not that different. So, you know, Brees Hall was a league winner last year, did, you know, had some massive games at the end of the season, mostly due to targets, receptions, dump offs, all that stuff, kind of like from weeks 11 onward last year. And I think that Brees Hall can do a similar thing here as we start to wrap up the season. So Brees Hall, a very good start this week, even in what I think could be a game where the Seahawks kind of prevail over the Jets. But Yo, and Brees Hall, keep rolling with them. That's my belief. Braylon Allen, a good handcuff, but just a handcuff as we get into week 13. Next up, we have the Titans who will travel to face the Commanders. Tony Pollard bounced back last week. I was expecting uh, in a tough matchup on the road, maybe another bad game out of Tony Pollard. And he probably watched 
my videos last week, and that's why he had a good game. 21.9 fantasy points because I inspired Tony Pollard. 119 yards on the ground, a touchdown, five targets, three catches, and 10 receiving yards. It's the commanders this week. This defense has been better-ish over the past couple weeks, but uh, they still aren't very good against the run, so I would feel fine starting Tony Pollard this week. Have confidence in him once again, and really look on the season. Single digits just three times. I mean, Pollard's been very good. He's the clear-cut RB1 here. Tajay Spears not healthy. Julius Chestnut not doing a whole lot. Josh Kelly uh, does not a factor here as well, so Tony Pollard, the running back that we want to start when it comes to the Tennessee Titans, and I'm okay with him this week. Now, uh, we got kind of a very shaky situation here with those commanders running backs. Uh, Brian Robinson, don't have full news at the time of recording this in terms of his ankle injury, what that's going to look like. Austin Eckler's in concussion protocol. Jeremy McNichols could be a waiver wire pickup. Uh, who knows? I mean, he was efficient last week in the three touches he got, 7.3 yards per carry. Um, but yeah, this turned into a game script where the running backs were either injured or not necessary and the commanders needed to throw the football as we saw in the fourth quarter of that game. So big old question mark here. I'm fine starting Brian Robinson Jr. If he plays, I'm fine starting Austin Eckler if he plays, but they kind of get moved down to flex category as they're coming off of injuries. We'll see what happens. They're not my favorite starts, but we kind of got to let the week progress before we can make a final decision on the commanders running backs. As we get in to week 13. Next up, we have the Steelers. You're going to travel to face the Bengals. So let's start with Najee Harris. Uh, kind of a bad game in the snow. 7.4 fantasy points. Kind of saw him like start to get less and less uh, production in that game. 41 yards on the ground. 2.5, 6 yards per carry. Two targets, two catches, 13 receiving yards. Kind of felt like a game where... A running back like Najee Harris would do well in, but we saw more uh, opportunity go to Jalen Warren as he had 11 touches, 45 yards on the ground, and did score a touchdown as well as uh, five targets, three receptions, 19 receiving yards, 15.4 fantasy points. So listen, you kind of get these back and forth weeks with this backfield. Najee's been the more consistent back from a fantasy perspective. He has double digits in every game since week three, except for two games. And like, if you're looking at Jalen Warren's opportunity in this game, well, he also had 12 touches in week seven, 7.9 points and 14 touches in week 10, 9.5 points, uh, not including the passing game in both of those games as well. So uh, you know, Warren really benefited from that touchdown. If he doesn't score the touchdown, he doesn't hit double digits this past week. So, listen, Jalen Warren, probably one of my favorite handcuffs in fantasy football right now, has plenty of standalone value. Can help get you through if you need a couple points, but it's kind of just in that eh category. And I'm definitely okay starting Najee Harris. Think he can bounce back. I mean, he doesn't really have a crazy high ceiling, but the floor is safe. So, you got to roll with him against the Bengals. It's a good matchup. That's fine. Jalen Warren. Kind of a desperation start. Not really my favorite start with no teams on bye week, but uh, a player who has standalone value will get you some points this week and uh, maybe can get you into that double digit range if you need it. Now, Chase Brown was on bye week in week 12, but don't forget he had 19.3 or more fantasy points in three straight games with a ceiling of 26.7 fantasy points. He has double digits in every game except for one since week four. He's a must start running back to me. I mean, I know this is a tough matchup against the Steelers, but Nick Chubb, had a day against him last week, although that game, game script was weird. There's snow, all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, I, I love Chase Brown moving forward. I don't think he's going to be close to the bench for me in any game moving forward. Khalil Herbert has not been a factor whatsoever. He is just a depth piece. Travion Williams has not been a factor whatsoever. Zach Moss is still on IR. And Chris Evans is on IR. This is a 100% clear cut. Chase Brown backfield, that's it. I think he's a strong start in week 13. Next up, we got the Cardinals. You're going to travel to face the Vikings. Let's start with the Cardinals as James Conner is coming off of a bad week with 9.9 .9 fantasy points. Uh, seven touches, eight rushing yards, 1.14 yards per carry. If you started him, luckily he had five catches off of five targets for 41 receiving yards. And he at least didn't come away with like one point. But um, yeah, listen, guys, Connor has single digits three times on the season. I'm still OK with starting him. 
But double check, I mean, who's on your roster here? Because this Vikings defense is very stout against the run. So I think Connor will get the touches, will be involved, but maybe be a, a little uh, hesitant because of the matchup on the road here. Now, Trey Benson had four touches last week, was expecting a little bit more out of him potentially. Amari DeMicardo had a touch. This is still Connor's backfield, and the game script certainly didn't benefit the running backs this past week. Um, another tough matchup here. I'm not going to start anyone other than James Connor in this backfield, but really only starting him if I absolutely have to just due to the matchup and the fact that the Cardinals' offense this past week just didn't really look that good, didn't really look in sync. So, like, really, if you own Trey McBride, you feel good. I mean, 15 touch or 15 targets, 12 tar. 12, oh my goodness, 15 targets, 12 receptions for McBride this past week. Good. Marvin Harrison Jr. almost caught a touchdown, which would have helped his stat line. But like this Cardinals offense is just very wishy-washy from a fantasy perspective. And uh, I would just be a little bit hesitant with Connor. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up with that. Um, Aaron Jones gave us some faith bouncing back in week 12 against the Chicago Bears, 19.9 fantasy points, 106 total rushing yards, a rushing touchdown, four targets, three catches, 23 receiving yards, uh, did have his second loss fumble of the season, but it didn't affect his game. They kept him in there, kept rolling with him. And he came through bounced back after a 5.3 fantasy day in week 11 Jones on the season. Three single-digit performances. Everything outside of that's been double digits. He's a strong start this week. You can keep rolling with him. Cam Akers, just three touches and a catch this past week. Ty Chandler's been demoted to RB3. Don't need to start either of those guys. So, Connor, check who you got. He's startable. Aaron Jones, a strong start in Week 13. Next up, we have the Rams, who are going to travel to face the Saints. Let's start with Kyron Williams, who was a player that I talked about last week as still a startable player, but a player that maybe you want to tamper your expectations against. Maybe uh, will have a lower ceiling as he went up against the Philadelphia Eagles. 11.2 fantasy points. Was still efficient on the ground. 4.5 yards per carry, 72 total rushing yards, um, and a rushing touchdown. Did have two fumbles, though. One of them lost, which is a little bit concerning because since week nine, he has a total of four fumbles and two of them lost fumbles. So keep an eye on that. And then since week nine, he's at 11.2 or less fantasy points in every game. That ceiling's been missing. But this matchup against the Saints, one of the worst run defenses in the NFL, I will keep rolling with Kyron Williams. The Saints also bad against the pass. This should be a nice kind of bounce back spot for the Rams coming off of a tough loss against the Philadelphia Eagles. So I say keep rolling with Kyron Williams. I don't see any reason to bench him this week. He's a strong start. Anybody else here? Blake Corum, Ronnie Rivers, not not even going to go over them. <laughs> not not consideration going into the following week. Now, Alvin Kamara on bye week in week 12, he has one single digit performance on the season. He's still a top five running back in fantasy football. He's been great. Not a ton to break down here. I know the Rams have improved in terms of their run defense, but uh, they didn't really show that this past week against uh, Saquon Barkley and the Philadelphia Eagles, did they? So uh, I will say that Alvin Kamara is a strong start this week, and you're not benching Kamara. Anybody else on this roster? I know we've seen injuries to Kendra Miller, Jamal Williams, so the pecking order is a little shaken up here. Nobody else is in consideration for fantasy. We're starting Alvin Kamara, We're starting Kyron Williams. We got two studs. Fire them up in week 13. Next up, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who will travel to face the Carolina Panthers. And just when you started to think maybe we have this Buccaneers backfield figure it out. We don't, but um, I will give you guys some confidence. If you're a Bucky Irving owner, you're feeling very good right now, and you're going to continue to roll with him in a great matchup against the Carolina Panthers. He's coming off a game where he had 27.1 fantasy points, 12 touches on the ground, 87 rushing yards, a touchdown, six targets. Six catches, 64 receiving yards. Now let's kind of let this bleed into Rashad White, who had just one target, one catch 
this past week, which is a little bit concerning if you're a Rashad White owner. But he did have 12 touches, 37 yards on the ground, and a touchdown finished with 11.7 fantasy points. Rashad White's the RB27 in fantasy. Bucky Irving's the RB24. So they're only three spots away. Since week seven of the season, we've seen double digits in every game for both running backs, except for week nine against the Chiefs. Bucky Irving had 6.4 fantasy points. And quite frankly, the only reason Rashad White hit double digits in that game is because he scored that rushing touchdown. He was not very effective in that game either. So these two running backs are not that far apart. I know we saw a lower ceiling for White and we saw Irving get involved in the passing game where in the past couple weeks you saw Rashad White have six or more targets in every game since week seven except for that matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs where Bucky Irving had only more than three targets in one of those games, which was against Atlanta. So listen, if you own Rashad White, he's still a startable running back. He's still a good flex option. And this is a smash matchup for both running backs involved. So Irving is the running back that you want here. Don't get me wrong. But Rashad White, as I've been saying throughout the course of the season, yes, I'm a Rashad White stand. Go ahead and give me hate in the comments. He still has value in this backfield. Now, the elephant in the room is that Sean Tucker got some involvement this past week, including some goal line touches, but just four touches, three yards on the ground, 0.75 yards per carry, a touchdown, then a fumble uh, at the goal line as well. Uh, I mean, maybe he gets some involvement this week, but I'm not going to bank on it. Eight total fantasy points. I know that they've come out and said they want to get Tucker more involved. Uh, I think they're trying to kind of keep everyone healthy here as they try to make a playoff push, which they certainly can do. But yeah, listen, Sean Tucker, maybe you can pick him up, monitor the situation. He sits at 5% rostered, but not going to be starting him going into week 13. But Irving and White, I think, are both very startable. Now, I was a little bit lower on Chuba Hubbard this past week, not because I thought Jonathan Brooks was going to take off, but because it was a bad matchup uh, on the road, or excuse me, at home against the Chiefs. And uh, he still came through for you. 15 fantasy points, 58 yards on the ground, a duddy, and added uh, one reception for two receiving yards. He gets Tampa Bay this week. Uh, go ahead and fire him up. I mean, I know that Tampa Bay played very well against Tyrone Tracy this past week, but ultimately they have not been good against the run on the season. So Chuba at home with Bryce Young playing good at the quarterback sit or quarterback position. Uh, I will continue to roll with Chuba Hubbard for the rest of the season. I don't see any reason to bench him except maybe on the road against Philly in week 14. Like it's a tough matchup on the road, but outside of that, Chuba, a top 10 running back in fantasy, good matchup, came through uh, in week 12 in a bad matchup. Keep rolling with Chuba Hubbard. He is a strong start in week 13. And you know when there's a running back playing the Carolina Panthers, I'm heading straight to underdog to take one of their lines. So I'm going underdog, taking the over on Bucky Irving's total rushing yards, sitting at 59 and a half rushing yards. He has hit that in the last two games he's the lead back for the Buccaneers even if this is a split backfield and he gets a fantastic matchup this week against the Carolina Panthers one of the worst run defenses in the NFL so I'm headed straight to underdog taking the over on Bucky Irving's rushing nerds you're going to get a free pick em on underdog when you sign up with promo code the catch so take that free pick em Take Irving's total rushing yards. Once both of those lines hit, you'll automatically triple your cash entry. And on top of that, as long as you sign up with promo code the catch, that link is down below. Underdog is also going to give you a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. All right, final game of the afternoon slate for Sunday is going to be a good one. We got the Battle of the Birds. We got the Eagles traveling to face the Ravens, and this is the easiest game we'll talk about <laughs> in this entire video. Start Saquon Barkley, start Derrick Henry, bench everybody else. You guys can go ahead and skip to the next game, but Saquon Barkley, wow, on a historic pace. He is on pace to break the single season rushing uh, record. He's on pace for 20 touchdowns. He's on pace for a, a lot of things. <laughs> He's RB1 in fantasy. Don't forget, in the offseason, my two most talked about running backs to target were Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry. I just want to remind you guys, but yeah, there's, there's nothing to break down here. It might not be a good matchup. It doesn't matter. Barkley's in your starting lineup. Might not be a good matchup for Derrick Henry. Doesn't matter. You start Derrick Henry. As a reminder, 
I am recording this before Monday Night Football, so God forbid there's a serious injury to Derrick Henry or something that for some reason would change my mind. It'll be in a pinned comment down below, but I, I doubt either of those things will happen. Henry has a touchdown in every game on the season. There's only one running back with more fantasy points than Bark or than Henry at the time of recording this. That's Barkley. Let's just move along. Start Barkley. Start Henry. No reason to start anybody else in this week 13 matchup. All right, Sunday night football. We're going to get the Niners traveling to face the Buffalo Bills. Let's start with the Niners. Christian McCaffrey coming off of a bad game. 7.8 fantasy points, uh, 11 touches, 31 rushing yards, four targets, three catches, 37 total receiving yards, and a lost fumble. So listen, I will say if Brock Purdy doesn't suit up this week, which he might not. He did practice and throw on uh, Monday, the time of recording this. I don't know how I feel about C-Mac this week. It's not a bad matchup per se, but if Brandon Allen's a starting quarterback, I don't see like a different output for CMC than what we saw this past week. And I mean, I would argue that the Bills defense slightly better than uh, the Packers defense, which I'm not sneezing at the Packers defense by any means. They've been good on the season, but yeah, this feels like one of those games that if we get Brandon Allen at quarterback, like I don't know how I feel about C-Mac. It's really going to depend on who else you own. Maybe there's some more life if they give the start to Josh Dobbs. But yeah, this is one of those situations that I'm still going to put C-Mac in the start category, but his total upside on the season is really start to drain here. Uh, we did see a little bit of involvement to Jordan Mason, three touches. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 yeah. There's just something about this one I don't feel good about, but uh, it's Christian McCaffrey. Let's continue to start him, and let's just monitor the quarterback situation as the week progresses, and I'll just leave it at that because like, even if Purdy plays, is he fully healthy? Is he just here because the Niners have to win this game to save their season? I don't know. We'll find out, but let's just wait and see what the week brings us. Now, James Cook on bye week in week 12. I continue to roll with him. He's your RB11 in fantasy football. The Niners, not impressive against Josh Jacobs this past week by any stretch. Uh, yeah, there's just no reason to not start James Cook. Should be a good competitive game script. At the end of the day, I think the Bills come through, even if things are competitive here. You know, Purdy sits, then the Bills, they like to kind of just pour it on the teams, especially at home, Thanksgiving weekend, all of that stuff. Plenty of people together watching games, throwing football on on Sunday night. So James Cook, a solid start this week. And really, I mean, you've gotten single digits twice on the season in games that Cook has played. Everything else in games he's played has been double digits. So James Cook, a strong start. Ray Davis, a sit. Good handcuff. Good standalone value here and there. We know what he can do if James Cook misses times. Uh, one of my favorite uh, handcuffs in the league in terms of handcuff running backs in fantasy, but he's a sit for me going into week 13. And last but not least, on Monday Night Football, we got the Browns, who will travel to face the Broncos. So let's start with the Browns. Nick Chubb, uh, uh, I haven't felt very good about Nick Chubb on the entirety of the season since he returned in week seven, but... He had 19 fantasy points this past week, but that was like a game built for Nick Chubb, right? And luckily, he got the volume uh, to come through in that game in the snow against the Steelers at home. Uh, 59 yards on the ground, two touchdowns, a catch for one receiving yard. So, sure, Chubb is startable if you have to, but like no bye weeks, no crazy injuries. I don't really want to start Nick Chubb this week. Uh, okay matchup against the Broncos. They've moved back a little bit against uh, the run. They're not like top 12 or anything anymore. So sure, you can start Nick Chubb. He's probably the only running back that I would consider in this matchup going into the week. No Jerome Ford. No Pierre Strong for me. Don't even need to break them down. Then we look at the Broncos running backs. Audric Estime, 1.5 fantasy points this past week. Devontae Williams, 2.4 fantasy points this past week. Jaleel McLaughlin, 4.4 fantasy points. There's just no telling like what the split is for these running backs who's going to get the volume who's going to score the touchdowns it's just a mess in this passing game it looks better than ever for the broncos the browns very poor against the pass so i think it's going to be a big day for guys like Cortland sutton devon vele bo nix i don't know what you're going to get out of the running back situation here but with no bye weeks no injuries no reason to start 
any Broncos running backs this week. So uh, this is probably the grossest matchup in terms of running backs that we've gone over on the video to wrap up the video. So uh, there you go. We'll see what happens. There's your Monday night matchup. Nick Chubb, startable. Everybody else, benchable. That'll do it for today's video. There's every single running back, every single matchup heading into week 13 of the fantasy season. Don't forget, guys, I'm answering all fantasy football questions in the comment section down below. So if you guys need anything whatsoever moving into week 13, be sure to drop me a comment. I will get every single comment on this video cleared before Thursday's matchups as well as Sunday's slate of games. And I guess before the Friday game as well. But most importantly, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on any of the content because each and every week, we're going to have everything you could possibly need to help you dominate 2024 fantasy football. So make sure you guys are subscribed so that you don't miss out on any of the content. And with that, I'll say, thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.